Hello everyone, welcome back to Everyday Kelly. My name is Kelly. So it's been a long time since I filmed a video, um, quite a few months. And so I thought that it would be a good uh, way to get back into making videos by doing a nice, simple, gentle empties video. Um, I don't do these videos very often uh, and that's just because I don't really go through enough product uh, quickly enough to be able to do them often, uh, generally about once a year. Um, so I've got quite a few uh, things to talk about, uh, so let's get right into it. So the first grouping of products we're going to talk about is shampoos and conditioners. Uh, so first up we've got the Garnier Whole Blends. Uh, this one is the Honey Treasures variety. Um, I kind of like the one with the argan oil in it better, um, but this is the one that I got now now. Um, I have been using this one for a few years and I do really like the way that it allows my hair to be quite manageable, uh, soft and manageable. Um, now I have actually been using uh, Pantene uh, and I've been liking that, um, but I always keep um, this one on hand just for a change to kind of switch it up a little bit. Uh, when I first started using it, I thought that the scent was uh, a little bit too strong, um, but now I'm used to it and it doesn't bother me. But if that's something that bothers you, it's just something to be aware of. Um, but yeah, I like this one. So the next shampoo and conditioner combo that we're going to talk about is Tresemme. Um, so this one is the Moisture Rich. Uh, I have been using Tresemme for quite uh, a lot of years. Um, I do like the product. Um, I will always use it. Um, yeah, that's all that I really have to say about it. I find that it makes my hair pretty manageable and soft. Um, so yeah, so that's another good one. And the final shampoo product that we're going to talk about is this Marc Anthony Instantly Thick Plus Biotin. So this is just the shampoo. I did buy uh, both the shampoo and conditioner. Um, each one was about $10. Um, I have to be honest, I did not use this entire thing. I tried it uh, and I didn't like it. Uh, I felt like it made my hair feel really dry. Um, I don't know if the claims of the thickening properties, it says for thin flat hair, lightweight hair looks thicker and fuller. I don't really know. I don't really felt like that was true. Um, and I didn't use it long enough to see if, um, that would change over repeated usage. However, uh, my husband really did like this. And so he used it, um, and he actually repurchased it. Um, so at least somebody liked it. Uh, I just felt like it wasn't for me. Okay. So, and now we're going to move on to body washes. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is this OGX one. Uh, so this one is rose water and pink sea salt. Um, it's called a scrub and wash because it has like a little bit of um, a exfoliation quality in it. Um, I think it's from probably from the sea salt. Um, it was okay. Uh, I have not repurchased it as of yet. Uh, the reason why I bought this um, is because of the rose water. Um, I have, for a few years, I've been chasing um, a really nice, genuine rose scented body wash. And the reason for that is because uh, quite a few years ago, I had gotten a body wash from uh, Avon uh, that was a, had a rose scent to it. And it was the greatest, most luxurious um, rose scented product that I've ever had. It made the whole bathroom smell like you had flowers. Um, generally, I find with a rose anything that's rose scented, it sometimes tend, can tend to be a little bit too fake smelling. Um, and I kind of felt that with this, um, and another product that I'm going to show you coming up next, um, 
but it was okay. Um, there was nothing wrong with it. It's reasonably priced. I can't remember how much I paid for this, but it wasn't expensive. Um, but I just don't know if I would rebuy it. So the next one to kind of piggyback off of that is another rose scented body wash. Um, this one is from Nivea. I really do like uh, Nivea's body washes. Um, and so I thought I would try this one to see if it had a nice, uh, you know, genuine, more like real, like rose scent. Um, it does not. Uh, but that being said, it was okay. Um, I didn't find anything wrong with it. Um, I do, like I said, I do just generally like the Nivea body washes. Um, I find it does, uh, allow my skin to be quite soft. Um, so I haven't repurchased this particular scent yet. Um, however, uh, the next one coming up is uh, the Nivea Orange and Avocado. Now this one I do uh, continue to repurchase uh, because I do like the citrus scent of the orange. Um, funny fact, and I think I did talk about this one in a previous video before. Uh, fun fact, I think this one used to be called Happy Time um, and then they changed it a few years ago and now it's just called Orange and Avocado Oil. Um, but yeah, so this one I do like. So coming up next, I have my favorite body washes in the last year, and that is the um, Olay body washes. Um, so I've got one that is the Olay Regenerist Niacinamide. I don't know if that's how you, how you pronounce it. Um, so there's that one. And then the one that I had tried first is the uh, Olay with uh, hyaluronic acid. Um, I like both of them. Both of them uh, really make your skin feel soft, especially if you're using um, uh, an, uh, something like an exfoliating mitt in the shower. Um, I just tend to like this one more because I like the scent a lot more. Um, so this one I will repurchase. I wait for them to be on sale because they are a little expensive. On sale, I can get it for about 10 bucks. Um, and they do last quite a while because it is quite a large bottle. Um, but this is the one that I do prefer to use in the shower most days. So the next couple of products that we're gonna talk about is uh, lotion type products. And the first one that we are going to talk about is the Curel Foot Therapy. Uh, this one I have been using for a few years and I keep repurchasing it. I do really like this for my feet. Um, you know, when you have a shower or a bath, you can exfoliate the, the skin on your feet. And then I put this on and it really uh, hydrates and softens and really um, gives the feet uh, just really nice soft skin. Um, there might even be a little bit more in there that I might be able to get out. Um, but yeah, I really like this one. And the next lotion product that we're going to talk about is the Olay Regenerist Retinol 24 Plus Peptide. Now I bought this because I was looking for something with a retinol in it. Um, I have a little bit of hyperpigmentation on my forehead. Uh, that I would kind of like to try to smooth out or get rid of and just even out my skin tone a little bit. Uh, so I thought I would try something with a retinol in it. Now, keeping in mind that this is a drugstore brand, I mean, it's Oil of Olay, um, it's not going to hurt you, but I also was keeping in mind that it wasn't necessarily going to help. Um, and I did use this. So this is a night moisturizer. Uh, the only thing with it is in all of my research on the product uh, packaging, I Googled it. I could not find any information about the percentage of retinol in this cream. I don't know that much about retinol, but I know usually it will give you a percentage of retinol. Um, I could not find that information anywhere for this. So just keep that in mind. Um, it is fragrance free. So the fragrance is um, just kind of one of those strange, like, um, I don't want to say medicinal, but kind of on that end because it is fragrance free. Um, it does make your skin feel really soft when you put it on. Um, but I can't say that those effects 
really kind of last beyond when you just apply it. Um, that being said, I did use it. I used the entire jar um, and it didn't really make any difference in my skin. Um, when you're talking about a retinol and what a retinol is supposed to do, um, it didn't really have any effects on my skin other than just softening it when you put it on. So if that's something that is um, appealing to you and you're just looking for something to put on at night to just make your skin feel soft, then it's fine for that. Um, but if you're really looking for like a serious retinol treatment, um, this is not going to be the one for you. And finally, we're going to move on to some fragrance products. Um, so this is the first time that I have talked about um, fragrance products on my channel. Uh, maybe one day I will do a whole video uh, on uh, fragrances and the different fragrances that I use. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you would be interested in. Um, but for now, we're going to talk about the um, couple of empty bottles that I have here now. Um, so one of my favorite fragrance lines is the uh, one from Fruits and Passion. Um, so this one is the Pear and Peony. Um, it is not my favorite uh, fragrance from them. This is one that I thought I would try because I hadn't tried it. Um, but I just really overall love the Fruits and Passion fragrances, um, at least this aloe line, um, because this one is the um, one where you get a lot of the more natural natural, um, like fruity type fragrances. They do have another line that is like their fine fragrances, which I haven't tried. Um, but these ones are my favorite. They're not very expensive for a 50 ml bottle. It's about $30 Canadian, um, which is really reasonable, but where you really get the value for your money, I feel is, um, with the actual quality of the fragrance. I've always found the fruits and passion fragrances to be, uh, uh, just very like enveloping uh, and that they last a really long time on your skin. Um, and so that is the best part of it. Um, and they're very light and very just, um, it's really difficult to describe, but just light and fresh. And like I said, it just kind of envelops you. They're very rich fragrances is probably the best way to put it. The only thing is, is I wish they would come out with more variety of different fragrances. They used to have a little bit more. Um, they used to, I think, have one that was more of like a strawberry oriented one. I wish they would come up with something like that. Um, currently my favorite one is the, uh, grapefruit and guava. That is the one that I keep repurchasing all the time. Um, and the last time, like I said, I thought I would try the pear peony. Um, it was okay. Um, I wouldn't rebuy it. Uh, but, um, if you give it a try, you might enjoy it. So the next fragrance we're going to talk about that I have used up is the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. Um, so this one is a very well-known fragrance uh, and you will probably hear a lot of people talking about it. Um, it's very light, uh, very kind of citrusy scented. Uh, the only thing I would say about it is that uh, I find that it doesn't really last very long. Now, maybe Maybe that's just because when I first put it on, I can really smell it. Um, and then, uh, you know, a lot of times you can't really smell yourself, but maybe other people can smell it. Um, but that's the only thing that I would say is that I wish it was a little bit more, had a little bit more staying power. Um, but I definitely would repurchase this. I haven't done that yet. Um, but it's definitely one that, uh, is just, uh, like a fragrance that you can just continually buy. Um, you can almost kind of get away with it in situations where maybe you're not supposed to wear fragrance, um, where uh, someplace you're going is maybe fragrance free, uh, because it's just very light and airy. So the final fragrance that we're going to talk about is Modern Muse by Estee Lauder. Uh, so this one I asked for, for Christmas a couple of years ago. Um, I put it on my Christmas list, kind of sight unseen. I hadn't smelt it. I had heard somebody on YouTube talking about it. Uh, and so I was like, okay, I want to give that one a try. Um, it's kind of a mistake to do that just because everybody 
perceives uh, fragrances in a different way. And, and then of course, also when it's on you, um, it might smell slightly different. Um, I remember the YouTuber talking about how it was like a mature fragrance. Um, and that is definitely true. I can vouch for that. Um, it's a very cute box. Uh, and the bottle itself too um, is very cute, kind of looks like a little bit of a bow on top. Um, but to me, like I'm kind of, I kind of like it a little bit because I'm used to it now, but I find that this fragrance kind of smells a little bit like something that your grandmother would wear. Um, and so talking about like a mature smelling fragrance, for me, that's definitely what it smells like. It's not a bad smell. It's just, it does smell very mature. And I don't think really that it's for me. I did use the entire bottle. Um, I won't repurchase it. Um, so this was a fragrance that I kind of just used when I was at home or going to bed. I usually like to put on a little bit of a fragrance. I find it relaxes me. Um, and so that's kind of how I used it. So it did take me quite a while to use up the entire 50 ml bottle, um, but I will not repurchase it. Uh, so that's just a good lesson um, for me and for you um, to remind you that before you purchase a fragrance, please go in and smell it. Um, get a little sample of it, try it out, see how you like it before you spend money on it. Um, like I said, it's not a bad fragrance. Uh, it's just not for me. So that's it. I think that's all of the products that I have to talk about today. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more videos that are similar to this, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you very soon in another video.